My name is Connor Byrne. I'm a senior here at the University of Iowa studying biology and enterprise leadership. Now, a lot of people don't understand why biology. And I came to school because I wanted to be a doctor. My story started in 2004 when my dad was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. For those who don't know, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that uh, forces your body to attack its own joints. So it becomes extremely, extremely painful and limiting in terms of mobility the further along the disease progresses. Now, in uh, 2018, he was diagnosed with another autoimmune disease called IgA nephropathy, which is just a uh, degenerative kidney disorder. And then in December of last year, received a cancer diagnosis. Now, the cancer diagnosis was, the cancer wasn't our concern. It was a fairly easy to treat uh, variant, and we weren't concerned about it. What we were concerned with was the treatment. The chemotherapy drug that you'd be going on called cisplatin is notorious for destroying your kidneys. You have healthy people that go into cancer treatment, never had a kidney stone, nothing in their life, and they come out on dialysis. And with my dad's history, we knew that that couldn't happen. So I began searching for solutions. And I looked up the link between rheumatoid arthritis and cancer, and I found three things. Immunosuppressants were the common denominator. People who are on immunosuppressing drugs for long periods of time are more susceptible to cancer, secondary autoimmune disorders, uh, and a whole laundry list of other things. And, uh, and then you have the kidney disease and the inevitable dialysis in most cases. So my dad was kind of finding himself completing the recipe for a disaster with uh, high creatinine and high potassium, both from his kidney disorder. Mixed with the chemotherapy, it would almost certainly result in kidney failure. So, oh, me. Um, I continued my research and I found that the best treatment is, is, has nothing to do with pharmaceuticals. It's actually just diet and exercise. So, I created Telenu. Telenu is an on, on, accessible online platform for rheumatoid arthritis patients to go on to. Now, it is applicable for both RA patients with cancer or just RA patients in general. Here recently I've switched my focus more towards <coughs> newly diagnosed rheumatoid arthritis patients as they'll see the, the biggest difference. But we provide educational nutrition, exercise videos, and something new is behavioral analytics. I found through my customer discovery that a lot of people have really bad habits that are worsening their condition. So whether it's the food they eat, the lack of exercise, you know, in the age of technology, we're all becoming more stationary for longer periods of time. So I want to use behavioral analytics to help patients identify bad habits in their lives and then work to build positive habits around nutrition and exercise. So we are subscription-based. Uh, people can expect to pay $30 a month initially for the service. And then in the future, I want to work with employers of that are self-insured companies as well as insurance companies so that they cover the cost and then I can reduce costs for both of them. And I have minimal liability in, in the general sense of the word because I don't have any overhead. My cost to produce is relatively low given uh, the type of content and I don't own anything physical so I, I don't have to worry about appreciation. Now my target market, the age has changed, but I want to target people who have been diagnosed in the last five years with a, the disease being fresh, it makes it easier to change. And the older the people get, the less likely they are to adopt change. So that's why we want to target younger people. And typically they're diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 40, so my target market's going to, my age will change slightly. And we expect them to be on immunosuppressants and in relatively poor health. And right now, the target market actually, I upped the number to 150,000 eligible people nationwide with just over 2 million suffering from rheumatoid arthritis currently. In the future, I want to increase the offerings. I want to find, uh, through data feedback, I'll find areas where 
patients uh, want extra things. One common thing that I found in forums so far is physical therapy. So maybe Brian Gudenkoff is a member, was a member of this program. He has a, a physical therapy business, so partner with him potentially in the future. But I also want to look at other autoimmune disorders. Uh, Dr. Terry Walls, she's from the University of Iowa, had MS. Well, she has MS. But she's overcome a lot of the barriers associated with it through diet and exercise. So work with something like that. And then this can also be used as a general health program. Now my competition is relevant but also irrelevant because Embrel, they, they are one of the drugs that people go on when they're, when they're diagnosed with RA. They have something called the Living with RA Guide. Now this is kind of a they're trying to save face here because it doesn't actually really help people, at least that's what I've read online, and because they're a pharmaceutical company, they don't want to give out these things to their patients because oftentimes they'll end up going off of the immunosuppressing drugs, so they'll be giving this information out for free and then if people use it, they end up losing thousands of dollars a month. And another one is Caring Bridge, it's a cancer support website that also People also use for autoimmune disorders, so they'll just go on there and share their story, share information, but it's all free. And then the hospital provided programs, uh, everybody knows that nobody uses them, or a lot of people don't use them, and it's because they're very, very difficult to access. So by making it an online platform that people can do at home, hoping to make it more accessible. Uh, when I go to market, I plan to use targeted social media ads. Uh, because I lowered my demographics age to the 20 to 40 range, a lot of them are going to be on social media, so it'll make it easier to communicate with them. I also want to put brochures in rheumatologist offices where people go to receive their infusion treatments if they're not on an auto-injector at home like my dad is now. And then I want to target the R, rheumatoid arthritis and cancer foundations because a lot of them aren't partnered with pharmaceutical companies, so it'll be easier for me to partner with them. My next steps, I'm in the process right now of building my website. It's an absolute nightmare and I do not enjoy it at all, but it's coming along. I also want to continue my customer discovery both with RA patients and doctors. Uh, I've been trying to contact a lot of doctors recently. And then I'm hoping to get my beta testing in the summer, but I still am waiting to speak with a lawyer on any government regulated things I have to take care of, whether it's FDA or anything else. And I would just like to say that my dad, as of March, was declared cancer-free. And I, he went on my program for the second half of his cancer treatment. During the first half, all his numbers were extremely high. He was in and out of the hospital every other week. It was an absolute nightmare. And he started on my program. They didn't change any of his medications. And his numbers actually, his creatinine and potassium both went down during a week when he was receiving chemo. And it was the first time that his doctor had ever seen that. So I thought that it was really cool. And he retained 98% of his kidney function that he had going into cancer treatment. So I just want to help people like my dad and make some money while I do it. Questions? So you're you're specifically targeting rheumatoid arthritis, but there's other autoimmune arthritic conditions like psoriatic arthritis. <clears throat> Is there a reason that you're strictly limiting it, or you're at least marketing it toward the RA? Sure. Yeah. So it's mainly so I can gain my early adopters easier. I feel like if there's there's not a single service on the market right now that is marketed directly to rheumatoid arthritis patients. So I feel like if I single them out, that they'll be more willing to to come onto the program. And my customer discovery is for the most part validated that. Are there genetic markers that indicate you might get uh, RA and, and can, you know, if somebody had those markers, could they start your program early and maybe avoid most of the difficulty with RA? Sure, yeah. So I worked at Mercy Hospital for two years my, during my sophomore and junior year. 
And I was in the lab and drew blood, so I one day was curious because they say the RA usually skips a generation, but both my grandma and my dad have it, so it didn't skip a generation. So I'm a little bit concerned. So I go to a geneticist that we had there, and I was like, hey, can you do a test to see if I have the markers for RA? And she was like, yeah, it'll be expensive. But, so I didn't do it, but I know I have, I probably have the markers. So yeah, you can identify early if you're at risk for it. When my dad was diagnosed, they thought he had a ton of other different things. RA was the last thing that they thought of because he was pretty young when he was diagnosed. So. First of all, great job. Uh, you found a way to create benefit for the, the people that you're targeting. You found a path to market with almost no barriers. I think that's admirable that you're able to march forward. Uh, congratulations on all that. Um, what do you see in this, the next evolution? Do you see any additional product lines, any uh, additional revenue streams, anything on the horizon? Sure, yeah. Uh, well, thank you, first of all. But uh, the online forums have suggested that people want physical therapy. Now, doing exercise at home, nobody likes to do it. I tried to start doing yoga. And it lasted like two weeks and quit. So I was thinking of getting up at five in the morning. But I'm hoping by building these new habits that it makes it feel less like a chore and more, more part of the routine. But as for future revenue streams, referrals to physical therapy clinics if people don't want to do the exercises at home or. I was toying around with the idea with my dad. My mom got sick of cooking while my dad was going through chemo because he was eating every couple hours when he felt good and I don't know, it was bothering her. But do something like what Schwann's does and have these pre-prepared meals that people can order and have them shipped to their house so they don't have to fool around with one of the grocery store and things like that. But um, I'm not sure. That will be way, way down the road. <laughs> Great job. Like, what do you see the website looking like? Like, is it like you log on and it's like, hey, like today we're going to talk about this, you're going to do this exercise, or is it more like self guided? Yeah, user experience is one of the things that I'm searching for, like an expert in that. But ideally, uh, you'll log on, let's say for the first time, and they'll say join now. They'll create an account, and when they create their account, they'll take a, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of Noom. But yeah. Noom is a diet app, and when you log on or create an account, pay for it, you can take a behavior test. So they'll do something similar to that, and then there'll be different tiers, like stages. Right now, I'm thinking there's going to be four, but it's based on which stage your RA is in, and then there'll be a specific path for each one of those that people can go down, and then they'll do weekly reporting based on how they're feeling. You mentioned people don't really use the hospital programs. How are you going to make them use yours? The ease of access is one. My grandma, for example, she lives out in the middle of the country on our farm, and she comes down to the university here for her cancer treatment, RA, all of it. And she has to schedule all of them in one day. She has to do all of them in one day. She only comes down here once a month. And they always ask her, because I go to a lot of her appointments, they always ask her if she would like to opt into the hospital's physical therapy program, but you have to come to the hospital three days a week to do it. And for, she was like, I, I would love to do it. I need physical therapy, but I can't come down here three days a week. So I think that if I can offer the exercise videos at home, much the same that they would be doing at a physical therapy clinic, that people would, would opt into it. So there's like a full wellness plan, it's not, well, it's exercises and diet plans. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's both. Okay. It, it's a full program, so you, everyone should have 10,000 steps a day on average, things like that. But also, exercises specific to RA that people with RA can do. Because even the slightest bit of movement is going to be beneficial, and it's just a matter of doing that every day. And I'm looking into the accountability factor because that's something else that's tough.
trying to change human nature is not easy. <laughs> <clears throat> Talking about uh, changing human nature and not being easy, have you thought about gamification? Yes, um, that how was, to, how to yeah, I, uh, I was talking to somebody last week about that actually. I'm, I'm a very competitive person, and I know that competition always pushes me to you know, try to be better than, beat everybody else. So I've been looking into ways of making a game out of it, like creating a leaderboard or uh, a discussion forum is another one that I'm going to put in there. So that people can share, just like the the Caring Bridge free website. But yeah, that's the most promising avenue is the is the gamification. And I'm meeting with a psychology professor uh, in two weeks who deals in she researches behavior trends during cancer treatment, which a lot of the same will be applied to RA because it's a life changing diagnosis. The same. Have you thought about putting like, AI into it? Like, by any means, because like, also if you like a discussion board, maybe you like give an AI discussion board where people can just fire off questions. Yeah, the only problem with AI right now is like if you want to have GPT and you ask it anything to do with medicine or health or wellness or diet, it'll say that it can't answer or that you can't take the answer word for word. I don't know. There's a, there's a disclaimer basically that says don't take this 100% at face value. So that'll be difficult and I have no idea how AI works. <laughs> I'm trying to start a technology business and I don't know. <laughs> I'm learning. I have a question for you. Uh, first of all, great presentation. I really appreciate your candidness too. I think that, I mean, it's just, especially as entrepreneurs, it's not all fun and games. And so I appreciate your authenticity while you tell us all about this new venture, which is fantastic. Um, I too have a mom and a brother that had, uh, my mom had already my brother had her. Um, have you thought about, because oftentimes people that are going through this um, and they're not eating well, they don't have the uh, right kind of lifestyle, um, a caretaker's resource where um, someone that can log in and kind of get resources that's a little bit different, so kind of a little bit different avenue, um, because getting people that don't feel well doing something like this is often difficult, but if they have a support system that has access to the information, that might be beneficial. That, that's also, I guess, answer part of your question too about future revenue streams. That, that's a really good idea. I like that. Because I had to walk in, when my dad just went through his treatment, he felt like crap and he just wanted to eat whatever made him feel good. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, Dad, don't eat things that you like now because when you're done, you won't like them. And sure enough, it happened. He used to love pork chops and I can't look at them. But um, I had to walk in and just tell him that it was the Bible and that he had to follow it. And he did, which was good. But the support system through caretakers and them having their own resource, that's, yeah, I like that. Good. So that would be big in nursing homes. That's where my grandma's at now. And she gets a lot of it there, but they don't feed her properly. Right. Yeah. Um, kind of along those lines, can you talk probably, you said your, it sounds like your dad was kind of your MVP for the product, right? You're talking about how you were able to help him lower some of his numbers. Um, can you walk through broadly, like, um, what you had him do with this, and what makes me think I'm kind of associated with that is like, who was actually helped? Like, was he doing this on his own, or was a lot of like a caretaker, you or you or your mom, saying like, you need to do this, you need to do that? Sure. Yeah. So it does. My dad is extremely stubborn, so a lot of it did come from me and my mom pushing it. My sister was off doing her own thing. She's in school now, studying all that. That was kind of how I found like, the accountability came through my mom and me, which was not the end. I didn't want that to be the case, but it is. So I think looking down that caretaker route is it. What were the steps that you had to go through? Sure. Yeah. So first, initially, I, I didn't have him change much. All I had him do was get up and be active for an extra 10 minutes every day because he was exhausted during treatment. I mean, it's draining, both physically and emotionally. So we started out small, five, 10 minute. We 
take a walk around the house or we go outside and it was middle of January and February so we couldn't really go for walks. But I had him start out small and then we built it up as we went on because his treatment was 16 weeks, I want to say, something like that. 15, 16 weeks. So this was the last few weeks of it. Every week we'd go up in intensity. And when it came to food, I made him go cold turkey, which you shouldn't really do, but he uh, he needed to start eating better immediately. You know, had he been doing this for five years, it wouldn't have been a problem. But yeah, that was a that was a fight. There were no. But yeah, a lot of the accountability came from my on it myself and the, I don't know. I'm working with a nutritionist to put together structured meal plans because I don't, I've been losing a bunch of weight myself intentionally, but I'm not doing it in a healthy way, so I don't think I should be telling other people how to do it either. <laughs> Another potential resource would be for collaboration with the East Coast Summit. I feel like I've said this in like one every single one, uh, there's a couple of really great, and a functional medicine doctor that is actually, I wouldn't go with someone who's not, uh, but uh, they really, they've got very simple meal plans um, and how they've got, they're able to do the genetic testing and all of that um, and look for that, and they start with holistic food based. So very similar to what you're doing is what their mission is before they start to Sure. Yeah, no, that is good. And there's also, there's homeopathic medical clinics popping up all over the place now, especially in Texas. Some I just learned about in the last few months. So I've been looking into that too because it's already an accepted practice there. So barriers to entry would be much lower. Yeah, because getting MDs to, to believe that this actually works, it's like pulling teeth. Yeah. Well, function, that's why you start with functional medicine, right? Because right? that's where, and so many people are going that way, it's just not, insurance doesn't pay for it, so it's not cost effective, uh, but it is. Internal metal, metal or internal, oh my gosh, I can't even see. Um, there are some MDs that will listen, right? That have taken in no but so it is, that's in there. Yeah, and that's another thing with the, with the physical therapy. A lot of these people don't use the hospital programs because insurance won't cover it. So they'll be paying thousands of dollars a month out of pocket for physical therapy when they can be doing the same thing at home, potentially with the help of a caregiver for thirty dollars a month. Any other questions? Yeah, a question. Um, a great presentation. Most of the patients, at least what I to acknowledge that. They are affected also with psychological condition, which impedes them or hinders them, you know, to activate or what do you do? I mean, in your presentation, I don't see anything in the psychological uh, branch. Right. Is it something that you think that uh, could be interesting to introduce, or how are you treat it? Yeah. So up until last week, my before I replaced it with behavioral analytics. Meditation was the, the third offering, and through online forums, people that meditated said that they, especially with cancer, overcame the burden more easily, but then it also boils down to the support group that you have behind you. You know, my dad kept a pretty positive attitude the entire time, and he has since with his RA, because of my mom, sister, and myself, especially our dog, he loves that dog, but... <laughs> Yeah, the, that's something else that I want to talk to the psychology professor about, is how do I incorporate something that helps people improve their their mental health during the treatment. Because I, I, I haven't experienced these things firsthand, like I don't have them myself, but watching my dad go through it was psychologically tolling on me. I can't imagine what it was like for him. So that's definitely something that I want to look into from a different angle. We have time for maybe one more question. What will like the like, subscription length be? Like length of the treatment? Six months? Three months? Two years? Sure. So 
that's something I'm hoping to find out more during my testing, which will hopefully happen this summer. But ideally, we would, because we're using behavioral analytics, it takes anywhere from three weeks to three months to make a to form a positive habit. So it would last at least that long. But then we have to continue to provide new information, update things, uh, new offerings to keep people using the program. However, yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll come down to, to providing new information and updates and things like that. As we're starting to run up against the end of the hour, I want to ask our traditional final question, what can we as a community do to help you? I need help finding somebody who understands and is decently good at and willing to help somebody who can't pay them a lot with user experience because I have no idea. This is the first website I've ever built and it's difficult to say the least. So somebody experienced there and then also if anybody has connections with a rheumatologist, I'd love to talk to them to get their to do a little bit more customer service. Excellent. Well, let's give Connor a round of applause.